Hello everyone, my name is Sokin and today I'm going to show you how to make yourself a soundboard with voice meter. So, to get started, we first need to enable the voice meter macro buttons. What you do is head over to menu on the top right in your voice meter. You need at least voice meter banana or potato to make this work. So click menu and then click macro buttons, run on voice meter start. Click that. And then it should technically appear in your notification bar and you have macro buttons. You can double click that and now your macro button should appear or your soundboard, I guess. So after this, uh, what you have to do is you have to configure the recorder to make your your sounds actually play through voice meter. So what you have to do is click on on this, uh, no, right click on this um, recorder. And then what you need to do is you click physical input one and virtual input one. This makes it so whenever you try to record something, it saves it somewhere. And the somewhere is specified in the target directory down here. You have to change the file type to wave, separate to either 48,000 or 44,100 hertz, and bit resolution 16 bits, channels two. And then you also have to import, most importantly, click play on load yes. You don't need to loop it, you don't need to change the fade again, unless everything is too loud, then you can turn it down a bit. Okay, after this, you cl can close this again. You can go into your macro buttons, uh, either press here to open it if you haven't, or double click down here. Now when you're in here, you can configure your actual soundboard buttons. So you need a location where your sounds are, are saved. I have it in my music and then tutorial. I already have a sound here. Can be MP3 or WAV. MP3 sometimes are a bit buggy, so I recommend you go for WAV files or WAV files. And now you can listen to it if you want. Nut. This is what my sounds my sound sounds like. And I want this on this first button. So what I do is click up here to get the path. So click in here next to next to your folder name, and then you get the path. And then you control C it, and then you put it in here for, for, for now. So you right click the button and then put it in here in the request for button on trigger in, right? Then you can give it a name up here. So for example, I'm gonna call it all, I'm gonna call mine nut, for example. And then uh, at, down here you need to go to the very start and type recorder dot load then an equal sign then another space quotation marks at, at the start and end of the path and then after the last um folder i guess you write a backslash and then you type in the the file name of your sound file so for me it was nuts.mp3 <clears throat> after you've done that it should already be working if everything is correct so whenever i press nut not it should play it this one is on only one channel but that's because the file is a bit wrong because i made it from my voice a text to speech program but that's fine so when you click this button not it makes a sound you can also give it a color so button color you can change it from button color one to eight or default i'm gonna take one that's a bit brown or oh, that's that's just brown <laughs> not a bit you can also give it a key for example a keyboard shortcut you can take every key even you can even take keys from f13 to f24 for all your auto hotkey people that want to have a separate keyboard for this you can do that too you can even have control shift and alt and even tab i think my phone just went off so yeah this, the star is a tab key and you can also have control shift or alt only if you want that i don't know who wants that but now if I have control S, you click OK, and then if I press control S, Not. it makes the sound, even though I didn't click it myself. You can also have it in two positions. You don't need that though for the soundboard. You can also make it so your controller, if you have like a Xbox 360 controller, you can make it use the buttons from the controller. So if I click enable, and then you can uh, choose the controller if you have several connected. I just choose any normally. And then you click, for example, button A, and then whenever you press button A, it makes the sound. I can't show you this right now because my controller is not plugged in, but that's fine. And you could also make it so it, it activates whenever you speak, which I hope you don't want, but that's an option. 
but yeah that's basically it with the macro buttons you can have several in, the, in a row for example i can do another one another nut for example and recorder.load equals or i might I'll just call it tutorial and if you have a, have a different sound somewhere i don't know c save soundboard i'm just making things up right now and then tutorial tutorial.mp or wav in my case or not in my case but you know what i mean and then you can uh, basically also have a different button so you can give it a different color give it a different key keyboard shortcut so if you press the nine key it does that so if you press nine it should light up it doesn't make a sound because it, the file doesn't exist but yeah that works too and then, you, then if you run out of out of buttons you can just make the window bigger and you will get way more buttons so if i make it all the, all the way big you get a lot of buttons right so that's how you make your soundboard basically you can also make it so you have a button to pause the 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 recorder i will put that in the description so you, you just type something like recorder dot pause i think it might be i'm not sure that's why i'm putting it in the description but um there's also a pdf of all of the macro buttons in uh, this is going to be down in the description as well officially from voice meter so you can check on all the commands you can put in here or in here or in here whatever you want so yeah you can make a pause button that will be in the description and you can also make a recording button so if whenever you press this button it records something oh and here you can see it kind of open the file tutorial a little bit which is fine so it presses basically this button you don't have to do that then so if we press this button right now and say something like this is a tutorial and then stop stop it and then i go to where it says c users for me talking xd documents voice meter that's where where this path comes in you find this file recorded recorded or record 20 20 05 12 at 18 18 36 that's just my time right now so if i go there so it should be under my documents voice meter and then you should see all the recordings that you did at some point and the bottom most should be mine in this case so yeah you see record 2020 05 12 18 18 36 that's what i just did so if i double click this i should hear myself and say something like this is a tutorial yeah that's basically that and then you can also rename it so give it a name so tutorial it saves it as a web i guess you can't can't change it because it's open right now so if they load something else i can so i can rename it nut so if i load nut then i can rename it to, to, to tutorial <laughs> or not <laughs> you might have to close voice meter i don't know why it's taking or it's why it's why it's not allowing it to change the name but you can copy it to somewhere else that should also work copying should always work so yeah this is how you record stuff you can also then put this stuff back into into the into the soundboard so if i go back to my, my buttons then i can make another one with the thing that i just recorded so that's how you record other people too in discord for example i have one for my friend that says hello and then i can Im Im imitate him uh, when he joins a discord server <laughs> or when i join discord server i can say hello but yeah that's how everything works there's an endless possibilities with this so whatever you want on your soundboard you can put on your soundboard i recommend you cut it in audacity first so you have sometimes you have on clips you have an empty space at the start so you can delete that so you don't have a delay whenever you click the button so this one Nerd. goes instantly or pretty much instantly and if you have like a long space in the front then you can delete that with audacity for example and then save it out as a web file and then you should be good so yeah, that should be about it. So thank you for watching and I hope I'll see you in the next video.